decided to follow Jesus. I have to the what? What topic you want to talk about? Why you keep jumping like a monkey from a place to a place? What no, what you what the topic you wanna what the topic you wanna talk about? You kept doing this. I'm not the one. I'm you see, you right called now. me. You called me to speak about your prophet, the prophet of mercy, and suddenly you jump about Moses, and I, then suddenly you jump I, about etc. So you keep it changing. So tell me, please, what topic you want to talk about? Okay, let's talk about satanic verses. Satanic verses, no problem. Here we go. Go ahead. I want to uh, ask you what the problem is with Muhammad. Uh, receiving the satanic verses and Allah abolishing what uh, he threw in. Okay, so you agree that Muhammad he received satanic verses? Uh, many of the majority of the scholars and uh, the Fsiyah say that this story of al Ranik is a fabrication. But so you I just said, but you just said, everybody heard you. What is your problem with the yeah. Prophet receiving satanic verses? Yeah, I do it because uh, Ibn Ishaq and uh, two other uh, early books say that he received satanic verses. All right. So, I, so I, uh, can you tell me the story how Allah abolished those uh, verses? How Muhammad he said those verses and how Allah abolished them? What do you mean? You, will he receive verses? What the verses? About Allah's manat and al Yeah, what he said about them? Basically, um, he um, he was like uh, praising the uh, gods of the pagans, and uh, later on he said, "No, no, the the pagans were happy with it." And later on he said, "No, no, this uh, uh, is from Satan and, uh, and not from God." Hmm. Okay. And I want. Okay. So you agree with that? Yeah, because it's in in even a shop. But Wonderful. The majority of the scholars and the say it's a fabrication. Wonderful, my friend. We just heard all of you. What's your name, uh, your, uh, uh, if you might say, so I can call you? Mahdi. So your name is what? Mahdi. Mahdi. Okay, Mr. Mahdi. You are welcome. I'm, I'm glad that you called me. You sound like a nice gentleman guy. Let us not to change the topic, please, one by one. You said you agree with the topic. You agree that the Prophet he received satanic verses. But it doesn't say in the Quran that Allah, he said, can you make Quran like this? Can you make Quran like this, right? Does, this, does the Quran say that? I'm asking you what the problem is with Muhammad receiving satanic verses. I'm telling you the problem if the Quran is saying nobody can make Quran like Allah Quran. And Muhammad, he received Quran from the devil. And he did not recognize that this is not Quran from the devil. That's me. Anyone can make Quran, including shaitan. Yeah, because it was like uh, three verses. It's like meaning... Uh, one verse that uh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter Muhammad Muhammad he thought it's a Quran and Muhammad he recited as a Quran and the Quran says nobody yeah. can make Quran like the Quran yeah. so how the yeah. Prophet of yeah. Allah how the Prophet of Allah could not recognize that this is not Quran yeah because uh, Jibril Muhammad thought that um, uh, he was receiving from Jibril but uh, uh, Shaitan like he was uh, tricking him into uh, receiving this uh, verses that's wonderful guys uh, shaitan he tricked muhammad and he made him receive those verses how he tricked them i have no idea i, I don't know i wasn't there it's not mentioned in the is it true that there's a sh the, the shaitan he come to him in the image of jibril I would like you to show me the source from uh, Ibn Ashraf or any uh, early book. Okay, but you never heard of this story before? Yeah, yeah I did, but uh, maybe it's true. But I just want to hear uh, your problem with the satanic verses. Since Allah okay, okay no problem. Listen, as long you are the one who agreed that Muhammad here received satanic verses, and you heard of the story that Jibreel or Shaitan, he came in the image of Jibreel, right? How and what is our guarantee that not all the uh, Quran is from a guy who came in the image of Jibreel and his shaitan? What is our guarantee that the verse is saying that Allah will abolish the Quran, which is from shaitan, is not from shaitan himself? Because um, the Quran message of Quran is to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one God. 
Not okay, hold. Thing, okay, you know. no problem. But you know, if you worship wrong worship, still you are not following the true God. As an example, you're a prophet. He he kissed black stones. You Muslims, you claim that you are not pagans. <laughs> what is it? Is that from Satan or from Allah kissing black stone? No, he's doing that because uh, it's holy. It's from paradise. It's holy. Where did Allah say to Muhammad? It's holy. Kiss it. No. Okay. Why he kiss it then? Because it's holy. Why it's holy? Because it's from paradise. Where it says that? It doesn't say that. Where it says that he it is holy stone and it is coming from paradise, so we shall kiss it. Where it says that? Did Allah says that to him? No. So who said that to him? No, because uh, in in the reality it's holy because it's from paradise. Okay. That's the reason it's kissing. So if a stone is coming from paradise, that make it holy. Yes. Okay, so when you go to heaven, you are going to kiss everything in the ground? No, no, that's different. That's when we are in heaven, but uh, we are talking about the earthly life. What do you mean? We are, we are now uh, in the earthly life. We are not in heaven, so that's different. What? So what? If it's a stone from heaven, I mean it's a stone, and kissing a stone will make you a pagan person. Let me ask you, did this stone have a duty or it's useless? What? What do you mean? The stone, you see, we are talking about Muhammad receiving satanic verses, and obviously Muhammad, he received a lot of satanic verses. One of them is the uh, kissing the black stone. So this oh. is stone, is it useless or useful? If you touch it, then Allah on the day of judgment will uh, forgive your sins. Okay. Guys, if you touch the stone, Allah will forgive your sin. All right. The hadith says, if you touch the stone in the Yemeni corner, Allah, he erase your sin. How and why Allah will erase your sin for touching a stone? Because that's how Allah is making his creation. If he wants to do that, then he is going to do that. It's his decision. What, 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 what? It's a, it's a stone. You see? I mean, okay. how easy it is just touching a stone will make me lose my sin? Yes. Okay. Why? 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 What is the logic in that? What? Okay. Okay. Why? Why? If, why? If you touch, explain to me why if you touch the stone is going to erase your sin. What will happen exactly? Then uh, on the day of judgment, the stone will uh, uh, Allah will make the stone uh, rise, and the stone will say to Allah, "This and this uh, person, as such a person, touched me," hmm. and then Allah will uh, forgive him and allow him to enter paradise. That's wonderful. So the stone now became a mediator between the man and God. Is that correct? Sorry? The, stain, the stone is going to uh, intercede for you. Yes. Okay, but isn't it the Quran says in that day there is no intercession? By his permission. Except by his permission and the permission given to the stone? What are you talking about? He gives permission to the stone. He gives permission to Muhammad. Okay, so the stone is the stone is a person because you are saying now the stone is going to speak and the stone is going to have a tongue and the stone is going to have eyes. Is the stone yeah. is a person? According to the Quran, our, our hands and feet will also speak. By the, uh, and the, I, don't change the topic. topic. Is hands. the stone because you said the stone is going to have tongue and is going to have uh, uh, eyes? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Same for our Allah says in the Quran that our hands and feet will uh, on the day of judgment will, will okay. speak. Okay, maybe will, maybe this is metaphorical, but the stone literally is going to stone to speak. No, correct? It is not, it is not okay, metaphorical. not metaphorically. No problem. Okay, no problem. Not metaphorically. So the stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment. W witness to whom? About what? Isn't Allah knowing all everything? Oh my, my friend, that is very stupid of you to say. I can like raise one thousand questions for you if you. No, we are talking about I making know. satanic verses. What is my guarantee that this is stone story is not from Shaitan? Let me show you something. Did Did Omar Khattab he say that you are a useless stone? There is no harm and there is no benefit from you. Did he say that? You said that uh, if Prophet Muhammad would have not, not kissed it, I would have not. Used Thank it. you very much. But he said he said you are useless harmless stone yes or not it is not uh, useless he said that he said you are you no know, doubt that you are a stone can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone did he say that or not uh that is very uh, that is not true it does benefit because allah will forgive you so you are saying Khattab, he did lie 
No. Okay. If he no, well, he said the hadith in front of me, and you speak Arabic. Yeah, but that's uh, that's Umar ibn Khattab. That's not uh, uh, that's not the prophet. Okay, but if Umar ibn Khattab saying something not true, it's a lie then. No. What do you mean no? Either you agree with him, or you don't agree. Did he tell the truth when he said that? Did he tell the truth when he said that this stone is useless? Yeah, he, he, he said that, but the Prophet ﷺ did not say that. Okay, so the Prophet contradict the Prophet teaching, contradict the teaching of Umar al-Khattab, correct? The Prophet's teaching uh, contradict the uh, uh, statement and assumption of Umar ibn Khattab, yes. Okay, so Umar here was lying. No. What he was doing? He made, he made, his, uh, he made his own uh, assumption. Okay, how a person who is living in the time of the Prophet all this time, he thought that the stone is useless, and now he is practicing kissing a stone. Yet he knew it's useless. Why? How come uh, nobody? How come none of the Muslims says to him, "Don't say that. It's it's useful." Because uh, the stone, it's literally a stone. It doesn't. Like it will benefit us, but Omar ibn Khattab wasn't talking about this benefit on the forgiving sins on the day of judgment. Mm. He was talking about the benefit of uh, that the stone is like a stone; it it doesn't do anything to. Okay, anything. hold on. He is saying unless the pro because the prophet he kissed you, I'm kissing you. He is saying you why he is saying it's useless. Kissing you is useless. So this is about now and later. Kissing you is useless. But you said the one who touched the black stone. Is going to witness for him in the day of judgment. Omar al Khattab is getting your prophet busted saying it's not true, it's a lie, it's just a stone. No, no he's, he's making his own ass 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 assumption. Assumption, so he is making false assumption, correct? His uh, assumption is not true, no. Yeah, it's a false assumption. So let me, let me let me go. So if we go in the Quran, it says that Allah is going to delete what shaitan he put in your mouth. What Allah will delete exactly? Everything uh, shaitan through verses. In what he's what everything? How we will know what he will delete? What how we will know that this verse itself is not from shaitan? Because Allah will delete everything. Okay, but how we know? How we don't? If Muhammad here is receiving already satanic verses, because, that's mean it's okay, possible. But, it's possible Allah is not really protecting Muhammad. Do you agree? Because if Allah protecting okay. Muhammad, then how he receives satanic verses? Uh, because. Uh, um, in the verse 52, it says uh, the manna, which means desire and not recite. Mm. That's uh, one thing. And uh, another thing is uh, when we look at the message and the teachings of Quran, like uh, Allah says, do not oppress the orphans, uh, teach them good, mm. uh, be good to your parents. None of this can actually come from shaitan. When shaitan uh, reveals verses, he obviously is going to make disturbing uh, teaching. Mm. And disturbing teachings with uh, false messages like uh -huh. worship the pagans. Okay, the, the so you are pagan, saying like to me, Jacob. you are saying to me, if we find disturbing teaching in the Quran, that will make it satanic, correct? My, I'm asking you, if we find uh, a lot of good teachings in the Quran, well, Shaitan, he will deceive you. Satan, teaching. he will deceive you. As an example, Satan, he might come to you and says, "I am uh, like now. Uh, let us say, if I asked you, is the Ahmadiyya as Muslims?" Oh, of course not. Okay, so, but the Ahmadiyya, they speak, the, the founder of the Ahmadiyya, he's claimed that he is the Messiah, he claimed that we should do good, we should do righteousness, how we go, so your logic is a, is a, is not a true logic, because here we go, this guy, he never said go and kill, actually, actually, he's better than Muhammad, he never says go and rape and kill, he says do righteousness, go give donation, etc., this is the teaching of Ahmadiyya, so if we compare between the Ahmadiyya teaching and Muhammad teaching, Ahmadiyya will win. Yet you claim that the Quran is the book of God because there is righteous teaching. Let me ask you, according to the Quran and the interpretation of the Quran, can you have sex with your daughter out of marriage? Doesn't the Quran forbid, uh, make a long verse saying, Forbidden unto you are your fathers, sisters, and etc., etc.? Right. Uh, making uh, incest forbidden? Correct. But the Quran too says, وَجَعَلْنَا هُ نَسَبًا وَصِهْرًا And this is the interpretation, actually, we, uh, we put before you call. No, I don't care about interpretation. <laughs> I, care, I care about the facts of the Quran and Hadith. You don't care for the interpretation. That is very good. So, 
if we ask you who is going to give interpretation, you say me, you. Sorry. Who is the one will give us the interpretation, the correct interpretation for this verse? You said I don't care for interpretation. Long, as long as it is, uh, it doesn't contradict Quran and Hadith, then it, it is okay. Okay, my, my my friend, it doesn't contradict the Quran because it says you can have sex with your daughter from adultery, not from marriage. And the Quran no, says, okay. Everything really okay. According to Islam, let me ask you according to Islam, if you have a son or a daughter from adultery, can she carry your name? Uh, what does that mean? Can she carry your name? Which means she can carry your last name, she can be accepted by you and society as Islam. According to Sharia law, that they are your sons and your daughter. If it's in the hadith and the Quran, then yes. No, according to Islam, and I challenge you, according to Islam, if you have a son from adultery, he cannot be your son. Even your prophet, he said that al-waladu al lil-firash was zani lil-hajar, which means the one who is the son of adultery, he will be considered the son of the one who owned the bed, not the real father. Do you agree? Uh, Habibi, Habibi, I would like to get back to the topic about. We are in the topic. We're in the topic. We're in the topic. So you agreed and you admitted that the interpretation of Islamic scholars agree that you can have sex with your daughter. Yes or no? No. Okay, it's in the front of you. Read it for us. Okay, read it for me, please. Read it for me. Here we go. It's in the front of you. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. We are back in the topic. This is this is disturbing teaching. No, no, I would, I would like to talk about your problem with satanic verses. Because My I friend, we are talking about the satanic verses because I believe this is from Satan. That there's a prophet, he come to us and he say, you can have sex with your daughter from adultery. Wait, wait, I heard you say in one video, uh, the uh, Quran gives uh, not authority uh, to shaitan over Muhammad, yet uh, shaitan control him. I would like to prove that that's very false. That's very Is wonderful. That okay? okay, so you are changing the topic, but it's still it's, it's still close because we are talking about satanic verses. Shaitan control Muhammad or not? Let us see if this is true. The satanic verses okay. number one proving that shaitan control Muhammad because he controlled his tongue, he controlled his mind, he made him say things which he should not say. This is number one. Number two, your prophet, according to the Muslims, he was under the control of a black magic. Is that correct? Black magic is not shaitan. So what it is? It is uh, um, uh, magic revealed by uh, Harad and uh, Marut. It okay. Is, it, is not, uh, it has not, nothing to do with shaitan. Okay. So your God Allah, he sent two angels to open a school of Holy Potter and they teach magic. But who is the one who will <laughs> use? You are this. You are, you are the one saying that to me. Why you are laughing? Chapter 2, verse 102, it says, Allah, he sent Harut and Marut in the Babylon Tower to teach magic, correct? Okay, so they open a school of magic of Harry Potter in the Babylon Tower. Now, who is the one who learned from them the magic? The two angels. Who is the one who learned the magic from them? The uh, people of uh, Babylon, whoever wants to learn. Okay, read for me, please. Chapter 2, verse number 102. It says that Suleiman is not a kafir, but shaitan. They are the kuffar, who they are teaching the magic. Does it say that? Uh, can you show me? Okay, with chapter 2, verse 102, it's on the screen. You My can English is not good. No problem, here we go. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلِ هَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ so who is the one who is practicing the bad magic on mankind is shaitan the quran says that so your prophet was controlled by the black magic controlled by shaitan no 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 the uh, two angels uh, teach uh, magic but um uh, Allah says in the Quran that whoever does uh, accept uh, teaching this magic he will enter hellfire my friend does it say there that shaitans are teaching magic yes or no Am I lying? Uh, no. Okay. No what? So wait, uh, Habibi, uh, I will call you back in just two minutes. No, no, don't call me back. Uh, where you wanna go? I'm enjoying conversation with you. You are a scholar. Wait, wait. My mother. Well, I, well, I, I, I will, I will call you back. Uh, I'm not I'm going to stay you. here forever, my friend. Tell your mother this is important. You are defending Allah. He hang up. <laughs> 
شيطان control the prophet شيطان he agree that he receives satanic verses Muhammad is under the influence of a black magic he say things he is not aware of he do things he is not aware of and yet we can trust him to be a prophet I mean what is more proves we need that Muhammad is a fraud you know we have a caller I don't know this is a different caller we want to take the same person we want the same person to call please <clears throat> Please don't call until the guy he called back. He promised he will call back. Let us see if he's a man who keep his promises. And he is the one who chose satanic verses. And you notice how Muslims, they change topics so fast. From a place to a place to a place to a place. All of them do the same thing. And you have to be sure, like you have to force them to stay in one topic. Otherwise, they will be all over the place. And the reason they are all over the place because they are trying to escape the embarrassing moment. He called me to say, Muhammad is a person of mercy. The second we start showing him that Muhammad raping women, he changed the topic. My voice is on and off. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I apologize. My voice is on and off because the internet is bad. So you have you have to be here we go. He's calling him back. Look like he is keeping his promise. That's good. Hello? Hello? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So so my friend uh, my friend Mahdi. Thank you for calling yeah. back first. Uh, now, your prophet is under black magic. Black magic is the, what is what it is. Is it a, is it an evil thing? It is uh, like a hand work of shaitan. Okay, it's a work of shaitan. That's wonderful. So, by the work of shaitan, Muhammad was controlled. How shaitan was controlling Muhammad according to you? No, no, black magic. It was uh, controlled. It was uh, controlled. Okay, but the black magic. Why? Why? You, why? 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 It's is it okay? Is this magic is good or evil? I'm gonna explain. If someone uh, wants to uh, use black magic, he can uh, use. He can like um, uh, make the uh, person. They will uh, use the black magic on crazy, or they can do whatever they want. They can like divorce uh, his wife. Okay, so you are saying that the the one who did the black magic, your your prophet, he made him crazy. If, you, if uh, someone wants to, yes, but this uh, black magic only okay. lasted for one year, according to Ibn All right. Shah. Okay, hold on. Know, so, your prophet, according to you, okay, my, my friend Mahdi, uh, your prophet, he became a crazy because of the black magic, and you are the one who said they can make you crazy. So, your prophet became a crazy because of the black magic. How we can trust a crazy man, as you said, to be a prophet of God? It was only for one, it lasted only for one year, according to Ibn Ashraf. One, one year? Okay, one year. How many Quran he made when he was crazy? Guys, our friend Mahdi, this is very important, he okay. said, he was crazy, Muhammad was crazy for one year only. Okay, how many years Muhammad was a prophet in his lifetime? 23 years. 23 years. So we can say that uh, at least uh, uh, maybe... Uh, 1% of Muhammad life, he was life as a prophet, uh, he was crazy. So during the one year of Muhammad being a crazy, according to you, how many chapters Muhammad he made? But he was a crazy. Gonna, yeah. uh, when, uh, he was the Can you speak louder, please? I don't hear you, my friend. Can you speak louder? Can you speak louder? Oh, okay. Um, when 
Sunna Muhammad was under the influence of black magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed two surahs. Uh, one, I forgot the name of it. One is uh, Surah Al-Falaq, mm. which has five verses, and the other surah has six verses. Mm. The God of them has 11 verses, and uh, uh, the, uh, Muhammad needed 11 knots, because mm. the shaitan, uh, uh, he, there was 11 knots to break, uh, and each knot, Hmm. The break was to uh, reveal one verse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the uh, two surahs together with 11 verses. Each verse broke hmm. a knot and when uh, they broke the knot, uh, Muhammad uh, was free from the influence of black magic. So you are saying to me that Allah, he could not free Muhammad from his black magic. It took him 11 months. It took uh, each verse was uh, able enough to break one knot. Right. So th this is Allah. He sent those verses to get Muhammad out of the black magic. So it took your God Allah eleven month period so he can take Muhammad from the black magic. Don't you think this is a very weak God? It took him eleven month to fight a black magic made by somebody. I mean, what kind of God? He cannot release his prophet from a black magic for 11 months. And you are the one saying it took him to break two knots. And what those knots is about? What about? Tell me about the knots. So if I make a knot for you, I can control you? No, no, but it's a hard, pretty hard to explain because it's not uh, explained in the, in the Islamic sources. But hmm. basically, when uh, Allah says in the Quran that Muhammad will be uh, tested with uh, a lot of tests, like all... all uh, tests uh, before Muhammad, uh, all the prophets Allah uh, made before Muhammad, like uh, a lot of examples I can show you. But, okay, uh, show me an example of a prophet was controlled by knots. Why are you saying knots? Did you just say black magic? It's Why you, you are saying knots? that, and the Quran saying that you are the one who mentioned knots. This is in chapter of Al Falaq, chapter 113. It says, وَمِن Okay. Okay. So how how a person can control you by the knots and Allah took him 11 months to open those knots. Do you think that Allah he need more training? Do he need to go to Hori Potter school so he can finish it faster? You admitted and everybody heard you that the prophet was under the influence of the black magic which make him crazy for 11 months and it took Allah 11 months to take the knots out. It is Allah's not gonna like uh, like Allah's not gonna wish to uh, release Muhammad from the black magic uh, at once. Allah tests the prophet. How how that can be testing the prophet if the prophet now is a crazy, and that will not make him tested. This is not testing. This is this is this is humiliating. What the point of this testing? If if you are making things, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, something I did not choose. Did Muhammad choose black magic? No. So if you force something on me, and then you say this is testing, this is crazy. This is not a test. This is this is kind of illness, right? Because you you are for you are controlling me. I have no control of myself. So what kind of God he allowed the devil or any evil uh, uh, power to control his a prophet who supposedly people will follow him? Now you're a prophet, is a prophet of God, and you Muslim you follow whatever he do, whatever he say. So you said for a living month or a year. Muhammad is a crazy man. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back No turning back The cross before me